it's my pleasure to introduce myself i am cb in short working as team leader in reliance jio infocom limited chennai now i am going to share my points on lte throughput analysis let me begin verifying the rf status at a place is the first step in analysis i have shown the reference values here you can take uh, these reference values to say uh, network condition at a place as excellent good average or poor i'm not going to take much more about these fundamentals as a rf engineer knows these basics let me move on here just some expansions and definitions of rsrp rsrq and sa and all these things rsrp is nothing but reference signal received power in terms of dbm it is similar to rx level in 2g system and rscp in 3g system when we talk about this rsrp i have faced a question in an interview let me ask you all the same uh, the question is uh, what could be the lowest value of rsrp you can measure using a mobile this is the question uh, many of us will say answer like uh, 115 120 like that minus 120 dbm 115 dbm like that you will be answering uh, we cannot say a particular value for this question because uh, it will be varying from one mother mobile to another mobile Uh, it may happen in your life you can see uh, uh, one mobile will be showing one signal for and another mobile will be showing no coverage in a same place for same operator it will be showing like that because of uh, the receiver sensitivity of a mobile it differs from one mobile to one mobile uh, it differs because of the what type of material used to make the antenna inside your mobile so the answer cannot be a fixed value uh, it differs on receiver sensitivity it is the answer receiver sensitivity of uh, mobile uh, lies between uh, minus 110 dbm to minus 117 dbm uh, it may be varying also uh, similarly our uh, enode be also having uh, some receiver sensitivity it lies between minus 120 127 to 130 dbm like that uh now another question comes in mind why this uh, rsrp in uh, negative values that is why we say minus 127 minus 130 dbm like that why we are saying like that i will go on like this let me go uh, come back to our normal topic see this slide uh, shows one sample measurement uh, the place where we are achieving 100 mb base single issue throughput Uh, I have just uh, added the operator name here. <laughs> uh, see the basic values. RSRP is about minus 20 dB, uh, 62 dB, and uh, SINR is about 25 dB. CQ is 15, and everything is excellent. Uh, we are achieving 100 Mbps so single use throughput. You know, so this is the first level of uh, analysis. The RF condition at a place. You know. Let me go to the next slide. MCS modulation and scoring scheme. Uh, before going to MCS, we need to know about uh, CQI. So let me see about CQI. CQI channel quality index or indicator. As the name implies, it is an indicator for how good or bad the communication. communication channel quality is uh, the mobile equipment the user equipment sends this ck information to the uh, network the receiver node b to tell about two things one is uh, current channel quality and the other one is the tra- transport block size that uh, our user equipment can receive the transport block size is an important thing in the case of throughput Uh, CQI is uh, as uh, values from one to fifteen, whereas a uh, fifteen fifteen uh, indicates the best channel quality, and uh, one indicates the poor channel quality. 
based on the value reported by the CQI, uh, uh, CQI value reported by the user equipment, our network that is, you know, we transmit the data with different transport block size, uh, which affects that, uh, uh, which decides the throughput. We will see much more about this transport block size in the coming slides. Okay, the this CQI value is carried out by and that is a user from user equipment to you know B. It is uh, transmitted by physical uplink control channel when there is no uplink data to be transmitted, and whereas it is transmitted by physical uplink shared channel when there is uplink data to be transmitted. Let me go to the next slide. The relationship between CQ and MCS. If the CQ value lies between 1 and 6, the QPSK modulation type is selected. If CQ value lies between 7 and 9, 16 qua modulation type is selected. And if CQ value is 10 and above, 64 qua modulation type is selected. Let me see much more about this in coming slides. Okay, now based on the CQI value, modulation type is selected. So, so what? Let's see what type of impact it can create on the throughput. Two things are uh, very important in any modulation technique which will affect our uh, throughput. One is bits per symbol, another one is code rate. Let me see about bits per symbol now. Uh, one modulated symbol. Uh, here the symbol indicates uh, our OFDMA symbol. That is one resource element. Okay, that modulated symbol, one symbol, will carry how many bits? That bit carrying capacity for each modulation scheme uh, is explained in this slide. Uh, which means one uh, symbol will carry two bits in QPSK and same one symbol will carry four bits in 16 quam and the same one symbol will carry six bits in 64 quam so let uh, let me assume uh, if we are achieving a 3 MBPS throughput in QPSK, we will be achi achieving a, a 6 MBPS throughput in 16 QAM and we will be achieving 9 MBPS throughput in uh, 64 QAM. That difference is just because of 64 QAM as thrice the, uh, the bit carrying capacity of QPSK that creates uh, throughput difference. So, an uh, important thing that bits per symbol, the bit carrying capacity for each modulation scheme. Let me go to the next uh, slide. Here the various modulation types uh, are mapped with its uh, bits per symbol and symbol rate. You can wrapper these. Then we will go to the next slide. As I mentioned earlier, the code rate is another throughput uh, affecting term. When we talk about a particular modulation scheme, um, this code rate uh, tells us the efficiency of a particular modulation scheme. Uh, let me take an example. If we say 16 QAM with the code rate of 0.5, it means this modulation type has 50% uh, of efficiency. We know the bit carrying capacity of 16 QAM is 4 bits per symbol. If we say 50% efficiency in this 4 bits, Two bits will be our data that is our information bits 
and the rest of the two bits for redundancy of information. Now CK to MCS mapping. We know we already know that uh, for a CK value of one to six is QPSK. For seven to nine is sixteen cam, and for the CQ value of ten and above is sixty four cam. We already know that mapping. Now we need to map uh, MCS value. Uh, we cannot directly map the MCS value for a particular modulation scheme. It's not a fixed one. So we need to consider the code rate. Actually, uh, we need to consider the code rate uh, to map to get the MCS value. I have shown few examples here. You can refer these. Let me go to the next slide. Now the transport block size. This transport block size can be directly converted into throughput. So our goal is to find the transport block size here. Uh, this transport block size is uh, actually not a fixed one. When we say the transport block size is not fixed, uh, the next question comes in mind is how the transport block size is fixed, uh, decided. The number of resource blocks allocated to a user and the MCS value these values decide the transport block size which is actually our throughput now what is resource block i hope uh, most of you are aware of it let me go through quickly lte frame structure we know lte is fully ip based our data is converted into frames or packets and then transmitted each frame uh, has uh, 10 subframes uh, with uh, 10 millisecond long and then each subframe is divided into two slots each slot with a duration of 0.5 millisecond let me go to the next slide here uh, this image represents uh, on subframe with two slots uh, yeah, then again uh, this uh, each time slot is divided into seven OFDMA symbols or uh, we can say seven resource elements uh, this one slot in time domain and 12 sub carriers in frequency domain are together called as a resource block I will repeat it this seven OFDMA symbols are one time slot in time domain and 12 sub carriers in frequency domain are together called as a resource block one sub carrier is 15 kilohertz so 12 sub carriers equal to 12 into 15 equal to 180 kilohertz 180 kilohertz of spectrum used for one resource block and it has 0.5 millisecond of duration one uh, time slot is 0.5 millisecond 0.5 millisecond of duration and time domain oh, if we have 20 megahertz of spectrum the upper 1 megahertz of spectrum and lower 1 megahertz of spectrum is used as god band the remaining 18 megahertz divided by 180 kilohertz that is our resource block 12 sub carriers 180 kilo, kilohertz we will get we will be getting 100 resource blocks uh, actually the, the e node b takes care of resource allocation that is the number of resource blocks allocated to a user which will be deciding the throughput of uh, for a particular user now the question is what is the lowest level of resource allocation that means uh, a user can uh, what is the lowest uh, number of resource blocks he will be allocated by the e node b it can be a minimum of a resource block yeah, for one resource block 
uh, it will be deciding the throughput how many resource blocks are allocated to a particular user will de decide the throughput of the particular user we will see about that in coming slides this image represents the resource grid for uh, here we are be represent the physical resource block physical resource block of 0 to 5 that is uh, 6 resource blocks in uh, frequency domain and subframe 0 to 9 uh, totally 10 subframes 10 subframes is nothing but one radio frame one radio frame in uh, time domain and 6 resource blocks in frequency domain are shown in this resource grid uh, what are the channels could be uh, present are marked with different colors here it, it is nothing but the channel uh, I don't want to go into these channel concepts now MCS to ITBS ITBS is nothing but a transport block size index the values are mapped here we will be using these values while calculating the throughput let me go to the next slide From the previous slide, we know how to calculate the ITBS, uh, that is transport block size index uh, from the MCS values. Now, we all know that our uh, E-node takes care of resource allocation, that is how many resource blocks allocated to a particular user. From that uh, number of resource block uh, allocated, that is uh, NPRB, that is uh, number of physical resource blocks and ITBS values. The transport block size table is shown here. This transport block size can be directly converted into throughput. We will see that in uh, next slides. Actually, there is a number of uh, physical resource blocks is up to 100. This table uh, will continuously go on up to this number of blocks goes to 100. Uh, I will show the next uh, slide. This uh, transport block size table is a continuous one from 1 to 100 that is number of resource blocks from 1 to 100 they have given transport block size table like this in 3GPV document but I have only taken the first and the last portion of that doc, uh, document uh, let, uh, let me call, uh, start calculating the throughput from this table uh, for ITBS the maximum value is 26 and uh, if uh, a user is allocated up to the maximum level of uh, 100 resource blocks the transport block size will be 75376 bits per subframe let me start the calculation now the throughput calculation i want to calculate the topmost throughput what an lt user can get for that sake i am assuming all the number of resource blocks that is in 20 megahertz spectrum the number of resource blocks is 100 i am assuming all that 100 resource blocks are like allocated to a single user and the tbs index maximum is 26 for these maximum values from the previous transport block size table we have already calculated the value as 7376 bits per subframe we know that one subframe equal to one millisecond to convert it into second we are we have to multiply with thousand we are multiplying that and we will get approximately 75 mbps that is the topmost throughput from the calculation but uh, how do the operators say 100 mbps download and 50 mbps upload we will see about that in next slide here it comes MIMO multiple input multiple output MIMO, MIMO is a huge topic we can give one more presentation on that separately uh, just remember uh, one basic thing when we say 2 cross 2 MIMO our throughput is doubled we have to multiply our throughput with 2 so we have already calculated 75 MBBs just multiply it with 2 will be getting 150 mbps in that 100 mbps download 
and we give 50 mbps for upload there is an, uh, one more way to define this peak throughput let me see about that this is the theoretical way of calculating the peak throughput just assume 20 megahertz channel bandwidth uh, normal cyclic redundancy code is applied and two crest to memo first uh, we have to calculate the number of visus elements for that sake we know in 20 megahertz spectrum 100 resource blocks are available so 12 sub carriers into 7 OFDMA symbols into 100 resource blocks into 2 time slots we will be getting 16800 resource elements each resource element can carry one modulation symbol so secondly assume uh, only 64 qua modulation technique is applied we know for uh, 64 qam modulation technique the bit carrying capacity is 6 so we have to multiply the number of resource elements into 6 we are achieving around uh, 96 mbps we go to the next slide now we need to apply 2 cross 2 memo we have already calculated 96.13 mbps we are multiplying it with uh, 2 because 2 cross 2 memo the result is 192.3 mbps now in theoretical way of calculating we have to consider 20 percentage of overhead such as pdcch reference signals sync signals pbch and some coding so we need uh, we need to consider all these so that uh, this 20 percentage overhead is applied we get 192.3 mbps into 0.8 it will be about 153.2 mbps in this we give 100 mbps download and 50 mbps upload and now now we came to know the importance of MIMO because uh, it is a throughput deciding factor uh, how do we know whether the MIMO is working or not the MIMO status let me see about that in coming slide here it comes rank index I hope all of you must have heard something called uh, rank index in LTE rank index is the control information sent by our uh, mobile equipment that is user equipment to our e -node B. it is carried out by physical uplink control channel when there is no uplink data to be transmitted and it is carried out by physical uplink shared channel when there is some uplink data to be transmitted that is when uplink data to be transmitted the uplink control channel will be busy so in that scenario physical uplink shared channel will be used otherwise physical uplink control channel will take care of this now coming to RI rank index the rank index is a couple of bit size that is when uh, we use 2 cross 2 memo the rank index size will be 1 bit and we use 4 cross 4 memo then the rank index ri will be 2 bit size let me see about that in next slide let us assume the 2 cross 2 memo in this case rank index is indicated using only one bit either 0 or 1 a bit 0 indicates rank 1 bit 1 indicates rank 2 rank 1 means our mobile equipment uh, that user equipment is getting good SINR signal to interference and noise ratio from only one of its receiving antenna so it is asking the E node B to bring down the transmission mode from MIMO to single antenna a rank index 2 means our mobile equipment getting good SINR on both antenna ports and thus it is requesting unit B to schedule MIMO so 
rank index is a crucial in control information that is sent by our user equipment to the unit based on that only the memo uh, scheduling is planned so in worst case if uh, a, ran a rank index control information is not sent by our uh, user equipment in that case you not be should assume rank 1 and it has to bring down the transmission mode to single antenna it is a practical measurement uh, screenshot using a probing tool called xcall please note the details uh, here MCS is 19 rank index is 2 and the number of resource blocks it is actually average number of resource block is 24 and also not the throughput here it is 15.4 uh, mbps uh, let me do the calculation now from the previous measured data uh, number of resource blocks is 24 and MCS is 19 for MCS 19 this adjacent table shows TBS index as 17 so for TBS index of uh, transport block size index of 17 and number of resource physical resource blocks is 24 for these values our uh, transport block size table shows 87660 bits per millisecond for subframe so 8760 we are converting it into kbbs then we are converting it into mbbs it is 8.3 pi mbbs Ra here rank index is 2 so we have to multiply it uh, with 2 throughput is 16.7 mbbs actually what we have seen in that previous uh, measure, measured screenshot is 15.4 mbps but we we have calculated 16.7 mbps the deviation just because of uh, the number of resource blocks allocated is shown in that screenshot is average number of uh, resource blocks it is not an exact uh, value so there is a small deviation We have another example. Here we see the rank index is 1. And uh, note the same values MCS is 15. Number of resource blocks is 21. And we have achieved 5.349 MBBS. Note these values. Let me do the calculation. From the measured details, we know MCS of, uh, for MCS 15 TBS index that is ITBS transverse block size index is 14 number of resource block allocated is 21 for these two values uh, our transport block size table shows the value as 5992 bits per millisecond which is equal to 5.71 MBBS a rank index is 1 which means only one antenna is serving so no need to apply memo what we have achieved is 5.37 MBBS what we calculated is 5.7 MBBS again the deviation just because of the number of resource block allocated is an average number it is not an absolute number that's why hope you all have learned something uh, it's the end can you guess what could be the next slide yes it's up to the end <laughs> Thank you.
okay please write your doubts as comments and show your love by giving one like That's all friends. When I say friends, no sorry, no thanks slide.